I'm sure over the course of this tour, the next six months, he's really gonna he's really gonna be a, a massive inspiration, a massive teacher for me. So I am taking notes as we go. What have you observed about uh, Ed Sheeran? I mean, at close quarters, I think you are one of the few people who are who's going to be on the road with him for six months, and that. That kind of gives you the ringside view of what it takes to be Ed Sheeran, I suppose. Oh my God, 100%. As soon as I finished my set, um, I went straight out and was sat there ready and poised waiting for him to, to come on stage. Almost sat there with notes, like, how does he do it? Um, but yeah, he. I just want to use him as a, as a mentor as well whilst I'm on the road with him. He had this... He had a, a, a lovely 15, 20 minutes with me um, backstage before I went on stage and just was talking to me about all things not, like normal, you know, I talked about his Christmas and packing for the tour and his kids and stuff and was asking me about my, my New Year's Eve and Christmas and things. So it just felt really nice to just, you know, a superstar like Ed Sheeran, just us talking about how we pack our suitcases was just really like nice just before I went on stage and He's given me some great advice about how to manage my nerves a little bit better. And um, I'm, I'm sure over the course of this tour, the next six months, he's really gonna, he's really gonna be a, a massive inspiration, a massive teacher for me. So I am taking notes as we go. I wanna graduate from Ed Sheeran school. That's what I wanna do. <laughs> what I found fascinating about his journey is that he's a very self-made man. I think, Callum, somewhere along the way, you are self-made as well. You didn't have godfathers protecting you, shepherding you, telling you what to do, right? A hundred percent. I look at what Ed's done in his life and not that it's comparable from my life at all, but the, the, the ethos he has and the work ethic and the journey as well. I mean... Ed worked really, really hard up and like, and, and always has done, but people think like, oh, well, it was that one song that, you know, broke him. But he's been constantly pumping out music ever since his biggest hit, you know? And I think that's the same with me. Ever since I released Dancing On My Own, my version, I've been searching for that next song. And, it, you know, I was worried for a little minute, is that is that going to be my biggest song? Am I going to be a one-trick pony? And, you know, especially after Britain's Got Talent, there was no, you know, like you said, Sam Cowell had kind of gone off and done his, another show. And I was left kind of like, well, what do I do now? And I've been working so hard since. And when I wrote You Are The Reason and put that song out, that kind of, for, for me, really solidified my place in, in music culture. And, and I still work so hard to try and find the next, you know, what's going to be the next big song that people walk down the aisle to or dance their first dance song to. Um, so, yeah, I, I see a lot of what Ed Sheeran has done and the kind of person he is. And I see a lot of myself inspired by that and and and, and following those footsteps a little bit. Now, in this age of Tinder, Bumble, etc., where love is like a questionable currency, uh, where, where how do your songs fit in? Like, do you also question, like, should I be writing, should I go dark on myself or anything on those lines? <laughs> Do you know what I think? From the dawn of time, people have written about about love, about relationships, makeup, breakup, and I think that's what people resonate with because you know, if something we all have in common, it's either being in love or not being in love. You know, um, and I think you know, dancing on my own is about heartbreaks, unrequited love. You know, you are the reason is about being in love with somebody so much that they're everything to you, and I think. You know, these are songs that I I am a part of that that reflect, you know, the, everybody's life. I think that that resonation and people being able to relate to songs for me is my bread and butter. That's what I've always wanted to do is have a song where people go, that's my journey, that's my story. Um, I've never thought about writing a song about finding love on Tinder. <laughs> um, I think that's yeah. maybe a little bit too far. But I like the traditional kind of, you know, finding love across the across the bar or something like that you know locking eyes with somebody um but maybe there's a song in there maybe i should tell ed like maybe we should be writing a song about bumble maybe that's the maybe that's the next big hit <laughs> yeah you said that he uh, helped you get or uh, get over your stage fear what was the tip he gave you the best advice that ed gave me was because i said i've never performed to this amount of people with this amount of music you know, last year um, I performed in Wembley Stadium in London, but it was for one song and then I came off. You know, it was the same with the current singing at the King's Coronation, one song off. 
So for 40 minutes to sing to people in a stadium is, is, is quite a different beast. And Ed said, do you know what he said? Don't think of it as individuals, because when you're thinking of tens of thousands of individual people, it's, it's scary for me even. So he said, just think of it as one big blob that you're entertaining, like one big, massive blob. And I was like, oh, okay. But I kind of understand what he means. I like to see the lights in people's eyes. I like to see people and I like to see the joy or the tears and just the emotion. And when you're in a stadium, you can't see past maybe the 20th row, right? So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like entertain the blob as a cheer and said. <laughs>